Hi there, I'm Dallas March. Thanks for checking out our video. Today we're going to talk about some ways to save you some money. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do it by reducing the amount of energy you use. Now, Normally this presentation takes about an hour. Today it's not going to take that long. We usually do this presentation in front of a group of people, so questions come up throughout our presentation. We do know that you at home might have some questions that come up. We do have three ways you can get those questions answered. Using the information on your screen, you could either email us, you could send us a text, or you can give us a call. If you reach out to us during business hours, you're gonna get your answers pretty quick. If you reach out to us during non-business hours, it'll probably be the next business day that we follow back up with you, but we will follow up to get you the answers that you're looking for. Um, this information will be available on the screen throughout our presentation, so don't feel like you need to write it down or try to remember it, as we will have that um, displayed on the screen throughout our presentation. So first of all, who are we? Again, my name is Dallas March. I work for a company called Ecologics. We sell products from a company called Yellow Blue. So if you think of it as a car dealership in the car world, you've got your car manufacturer and then you've got your um, local dealers throughout communities throughout the country. Well, think of it this way. Yellow Blue is the car manufacturer in this example and Ecologics, a company I work for, is the local car dealer. So you will hear both company's names referenced throughout our presentation today. So I thought it was important that you understand the dynamics and how the two companies work together. So um, th there you have it. As we get started, let me ask you a few questions. I have seven questions for you. How would you like to be able to cut your heating and cooling bills immediately? I'm not sure if any of us are going to say no to that. How would you like to save wear and tear on your heating and cooling equipment? If we can make that equipment run less, cut down on the wear and tear, not sure if anybody would be opposed to that either. How would you like to help eliminate hot and cold spots within your home? I think we've all experienced this from time to time. In the summertime, you've got one room that might be a little warmer than the rest of the house, vice versa in the wintertime, one room might be a little cooler. Uh, than the rest of the house. Um, so we can help eliminate those uh, hot and cold spots throughout your home. I don't think anybody would be opposed to that. How would you like to create more comfortable indoor living area in your home? We go home to rest, relax, be with our family, and we want to be comfortable. So who wouldn't want it to be a little bit more comfortable in your home? We'll talk about that. Who or how would you like to be able to help preserve the environment? It's a big topic today. A lot of people want to be able to do that, and uh, we'll talk about some ways to be able to do that tonight. How would you like to potentially increase the value of your home? I don't think there's one of us in here that has ever bought a house hoping to lose money on it uh, when you go to sell that house. Well, we'll talk about um, some ways to maybe potentially increase your home as well and show you some ways there. How many of us would like to become less dependent on foreign energy? If we can show you a way to cut down on energy use, well, of course, it's going to cut down on our, our country's dependence on foreign energy. So some questions to kind of think about, keep in the back of your mind um, as we move along through our presentation. During our presentation, uh, we're going to be referring to some different agencies. One of them is the EPA. They're the Environmental Protection Agency. They're an independent agency of the federal government, and uh, they're, they're there to promote environmental uh, protection. Um, the U.S. Department of Energy, they are the United States Department of Energy. They're a cabinet-level department of the United States government uh, concerned with the United States policies regarding energy and safety in handling nuclear material. I will tell you, we won't be handling nuclear material here tonight, but that's part of what uh, the U.S. Department of Energy does. Energy Star, the third one on our list. Energy Star, they're a voluntary program launched by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which we've talked about on this slide, and they are now managed by the EPA and the U.S. Department of Energy that helps businesses and individuals save money and protect the environment through superior energy efficiency, which we will be discussing that this evening. All the products we talk about here tonight, they're made in the USA and all of our products are manufactured with uh, keeping things as green as possible. So we take, the, take that angle with our products. We get our energy bill every month, right? We open it up. How many of us look like this guy? 
kind of shocking each time we uh, open up our bill. It doesn't ever seem to be going down year after year. It always seems to be going up. So if we're going to save money on our energy use, we got to use less of it, right? Where's our money going? 18 to 22 percent, and this is the U.S. Department of Energy saying this, 18 to 22 percent goes towards appliances and lighting of our home. So our dishwashers, our washer and dryers, the lights, if you have kids or if you've raised kids, you know what I'm talking about. You're, you've constantly told them to turn off lights in, the, in rooms that they're not in. Um, so 18 to 22 percent goes towards that. 10 to 12% goes towards heating water. So washing our dishes, hot showers, that type of stuff, 10 to 12% goes towards heating water. The big one, as you can see here on the bottom, 50 to 60% goes towards cooling and heating our home. 50 to 60%, the big one on the list, that's the one we're gonna talk most about tonight. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about controlling heat, keeping it out in the summertime, keeping it in in the wintertime. So as we get into that, let's talk about the three ways heat is transferred. One way, conduction. Conduction is when it moves from one object to, to another object. An example I, I use because I have done this before, put your hand on a hot stove. The heat is transferred. It goes right from that stove right to your hand. You feel that in a hurry. Another way heat is uh, transferred, convection. The movement of air, the movement of water generates heat, so that's convection. Radiation, this is a tricky one. You can feel radiation most of the time, but you can't see it. So you can sure feel it, but more times than not, you can't see radiant heat transfer. And to better explain that, we have a short 90 second video right now. Heat can be transferred from place to place by conduction, convection and radiation. Today though we'll be focusing on radiation. All objects emit and absorb infrared radiation, even we do, just a very low amount, but it can still be picked up by thermal imaging cameras that detect the infrared radiation and convert it to visible light. The hotter an object is, the more radiation it emits. Some of it even becomes visible light that we can see. Infrared radiation is a type of electromagnetic radiation which has a lower frequency than light and involves waves rather than particles. This means that unlike conduction and convection, radiation can even pass through the vacuum of space. This is why we can still feel the heat from the sun even though it's 150 million kilometers away from the earth. Some surfaces are better than others at emitting and absorbing infrared radiation. Dark matte surfaces are good at emitting and absorbing infrared radiation, which is why solar panels are black in order to absorb the maximum amount of heat for your hot shower. White, light, shiny surfaces are poor at absorbing and emitting infrared radiation, but they are good reflectors, which is how a thermos works. If you want to keep your cup of tea hot all day, you put it in a thermos that is coated inside with a shiny surface to reflect the radiation back to the tea and keep it warm for hours. So that's radiation for you. Again, you can you, you can feel it most of the time. Not, it, take, it takes a whole lot to be able to see it, but, uh, but you always feel radiant heat transfer when it happens. So those are the three ways heat is transferred. But what is heat? Did you know in science, cold doesn't exist? Cold is simply the absence of heat. And I know you, you might be saying, well, you should have been here last winter. I would show you cold. Well, I guess we've had it all wrong the whole time. It's not cold in the winter time. The, the heat's just absent. It didn't show up that day. So uh, it goes several months without showing up. So in science, cold doesn't exist. It's just simply the absence of heat. It also, heat is always going towards the cold. So if in the summertime, the heat that's outside, it wants to go towards the cold, right? You know, it's trying to get in your home to that cool air that your air conditioners produce to keep your home comfortable. So you've got this nice cool area of your home's living space. Well, that heat outside trying to get in through the roof to that cool air because heat's always trying to move towards cool air. It's like water going down a stream. The water takes the, the past of least resistance and goes down a stream. Well, this heat is constantly trying to find ways to get to cool air. And most of the time in the summertime, it's gonna be in our home. Well, guess what? In the, in the wintertime, it's totally opposite. Our homes are nice and warm inside from our furnace. And, but our warm air that's inside our home 
it's trying to get out up through the roof it's trying to get out of there to the cool air outside so we want to stop that right heat is gained or lost every single day of the year heat enters your home through the attic in the warmer months heat escapes your uh, your home through the attic in the cooler months so the heat is always trying to get in our homes in the in the summer the heat's always trying to get out of our homes in the cooler months and that happens regardless of how much insulation you have in your attic you can have a ton of insulation and it's still going to happen with your traditional insulation like this attic here got the the batted rolled in insulation we call that the pink panther insulation sometimes sometimes you have blown in insulation in your attic but traditional insulation this is going to happen no matter how much of this you have in your attic. Because you see, traditional insulation works like a sponge. You could have a sponge, and let's say you go to your kitchen, you go to your kitchen sink and you turn on the water where it's just dripping out. What happens when you take that sponge and you place it under that drip? Well, for a while, that sponge is going to stop that dripping water. It's going to absorb it. But eventually what happens? That sponge fills up. For every drop of water that goes into that sponge, a drop is going to come out on the other side because a sponge can only hold so much. And traditional insulation works just as a sponge. It's going to hold so much, and then like a sponge, it's going to start dripping out. For every drop of water it hits that sponge, a drop of water comes out. Meaning, Traditional insulation stops as little as just 10% of heat gain in the summer. It stops as little as 10% of heat loss in the winter. Remember this number here. We're going to talk more about this in a minute. 10% of heat gain in the summer stops as little as 10% of heat loss in the winter. Remember that number, 10%. Traditional insulation has a, a something called an R value. Do we, not, do we know what R value stands for? Guess what? It's an open book test, right? Resistance. The R value of your insulation tells you basically how effective your insulation is supposed to be. The R value of traditional insulation, it depletes over time. Three things that make the R value deplete. We mentioned one of them, time, the age. And as, as time goes along, the older that insulation gets, the more compressed traditional insulation gets over time. Condensation, moisture in your attic. Your traditional insulation is going to take on that moisture over time. We're going to talk more about moisture in your attic and some of the problems it could lead to later on in our presentation. But uh, right now we're talking about the insulation. So as your R value of your insulation depletes, it's going to lead to a serious problem. And that's going to cost you money. It's going to lead to higher cooling bills in the summer. It's going to lead to higher heating bills in the winter. As the less that R value gets, the less heat transfer is stopped in or out, depending on the time of the year. We talked at the beginning of our program. We want to save you some money. So what's the solution there? The solution is a product called multi-layer reflective insulation. Now, this technology that's behind multi-layer insulation was actually invented by NASA. They needed a product that would help keep astronauts and the equipment that goes into outer space safe from the extreme heats and the extreme cold. And in and outer space, our, our guys would go from 250 degrees above zero to 250 degrees below zero in a matter of seconds several times a day. And to talk more about that, here's a quick video. Insulation is helping us go places we could never go before, including extreme environments. When designing insulation for the International Space Station, scientists were confronted with a set of problems found nowhere on Earth. We don't have the benefit of Earth's atmosphere when we're in orbit. And not having that benefit, we're exposed to much more extreme environments. In the same orbit, we can see temperatures in excess of 250 degrees Fahrenheit while we're in the sun, while a few minutes later be exposed to conditions that produce environments less than minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And we go through this 16 times a day, every day, 365 days a year. 
scientists had to rethink the entire insulation process when designing the station. The vacuum of space allows only for radiant heat transfer, usually in the form of energy waves emanating from the sun. Earth's atmosphere prevents it from being overheated by these waves. But the space station without such protection is subject to the extreme temperatures brought on by solar radiation. The scientists had to come up with an insulation that would safeguard it. Their solution was a multi-layer insulation, or MLI. MLI serves two purposes. The first is to reject or reflect a lot of the sun's energy. And the second is to entrap heat that's generated internally. And by doing this, we can moderate the extremes that we see on orbit. One of the key components of the insulation is the plastic. On that plastic, we apply thin layers of aluminum. And that aluminum is very reflective. The mylar is protected by an outer layer of fiberglass fabric. This layer strengthens the insulation blanket. The inner side is aluminized to prevent harmful radiation like ultraviolet light. All the layers are sewn together to create a pillow-like blanket just one quarter of an inch thick. When designing the insulation, scientists also had to make sure it didn't weigh too much. We use very thin layers to make up multi-layer insulation. And the reason mainly is because of weight. The pressure shell of the module itself is about a quarter inch thick on some of these modules, and that aluminum can be very heavy. Well, the last thing you want to do is add more weight to the space station. Working in tandem with thermal controls inside the station, this advanced insulation helps to maintain a stable onboard environment. With a temperature of 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and humidity in the range of 25 to 70 percent. This is the future of insulation. So that's how it works in outer space. Now, how does it work here on Earth in our homes? Well, first of all, this is a small piece of multi-layer insulation I have here in my hands. We're going to talk more about what it's made of here in just a minute. But a, uh, to talk about how it works in the summertime, here's our house and here's our attic up here. We've got our multi-layer insulation, and as uh, similar in our, uh, a couple slides ago, that heat trying to get into the house, it's going to be reflected back away from your home's living space in the summertime and returned from its source. So if it's coming in from the outside through the roof, well, guess what? It's going to be sent right back away from your home's living space. And remember, we talked about that 10% a few minutes ago. It, your traditional insulation is only going to stop 10% of radiant heat transfer. Multi-layer insulation, 97% of the radiant heat gain will be sent back to its original source with multi-layer insulation. Now, I've got a demonstration uh, set up in the kitchen. I want to move over there, and we'll show you how this works. This is called our hot box demonstration. We have a box here that's got two different compartments in it, um, and each compartment is exactly the same with the, uh, the pretty much the exact same temperature of 67 degrees. They each have batted insulation, a uh, temperature sensor in each one that'll show us the current temperature. We'll call this one right here box A, and the one over here box B. Right now, as I mentioned, they're exactly the same. But right now, we're going to take this piece of multi-layer insulation and cover up box B. And now we're going to apply heat to both boxes with these heat lamps we have. And we're just going to let this go for a little bit. But note the current temperature at 67 degrees in each box. And uh, check in. Um, back in the kitchen uh, a few times here over the next few minutes. Um, as you can see, we've added a monitor here so we can kind of keep an eye on what's going on in the kitchen. But uh, 67 degrees um, in both boxes as we begin. So this is kind of a summertime demonstration. This is how it works in the winter, as we've talked about. Your warm air that your furnace or your heat source is creating for you inside your home during the winter time. Well, the multi-layer insulation, since it has the aluminum top and bottom, it's going to help keep the warm air inside your home um, in the winter time. And that's going to save you some money by having your furnace run less. 
Got a quick quiz for you, just a one question quiz, very easy. Knowing what we know now, knowing what we've talked about so far in our video, do we want to resist the heat or do we want to stop the heat? Do we just want to resist it or do we want to stop it? Of course, we want to stop it, right? We want to stop that heat from coming in our house in the summer. We want to stop that heat from leaving our house in the winter. We mentioned multi-layer insulation is going to do that, but what is it? It's made out of 99% pure aluminum. It's the outer layers, both the top and the bottom, as I mentioned just a second ago. And that is to design to reflect the heat and send it back to its heat source. So in the summertime, we want to send it back outside. And in the wintertime, we want to send it back inside our home. Um, the inside, the, the, the middle part of our multi-layer insulation, it's got a mineral-based fiber that gives added protection. And this also, add, this also does, it does a couple things. It, it separates the two pieces of aluminum, so there's no conduction heat transfer there. And it also allows the material to breathe. The breathe part is very, very, very important because it, it, it helps prevent moisture buildup in your attic. And we've talked about that, and we're going to talk more about that here in just a minute. But that, that inner core is very important. There's actually little pinhole uh, holes in the aluminum on each side that allows that air to move freely through the material, allowing your attic to breathe and which it cuts down on moisture buildup in your attic. So that, that center part is very, very important. And this graphic shows it, shows it a little bit better. You've got your, your pure aluminum, your 99 cent pure aluminum on the top and the bottom. And then you've got that fiber core in the middle of it and this middle part right here this is what separates us from our competitor because you can go to home depot you can go to menards or or a hardware store and get a radiant barrier but and yeah it's going to stop a lot of the heat transfer but you just put that in your attic it's going to build up and trap a ton of moisture in your attic which is going to lead to all kinds of problems so this middle part right here is what separates us from our competition and it's the most important part it allows your attic to breathe and we'll talk more about that as i mentioned here in just a second real quick back to the kitchen here we're a little over three minutes of the demonstration in the kitchen with our hot boxes um, in box a without the multi-layer insulation we've gained eight degrees in three and a half minutes and in box b with the multi-layer insulation we we haven't seen any change yet so we wanted to check in on that. We'll check in on check in on that again here in just a couple of minutes. As far as this material, this material, multi-layer insulation, it meets all requirements of over 2,000 international building codes for reflective insulation. It's also been fire tested. So this product is perfectly safe to have in your home and it's going to do a great job for you. So we mentioned the top and the bottom layers made of 99% pure aluminum. The power of aluminum, well guess what, 73 firefighters trapped in Butte, Montana, they were trapped in a forest fire, they were saved by using radiant fire shelters. These are aluminized tents used to reflect the extreme heat of the fire away from the firefighters. The, uh, these guys, they, they, were, they were three and a half hours under these tents. They, they withstood three firestorms and uh, the temperatures um, up around 1200 degrees. So uh, pretty, pretty extreme. And these firefighters were saved by these aluminized tents. Uh, back to the kitchen real quick, uh, four and a half minutes, a little over four and a half minutes. We've gained 12 degrees in box A without the multi-layer insulation. Box B with the multi-layer insulation, looks like there we've gone up one degree. So we've gone up 12 degrees without it. We've gone up one degree with it. So as we approach five minutes, so we'll keep that rolling and and see how that goes. Um, the uh, EPA, when reflective insulation is placed on the attic floor, much of the heat radiated from the hot roof is reflected back towards the roof, thereby reducing the amount of heat that moves through the insulation into the rooms below the ceiling. This isn't something I'm saying, this is something that the EPA is saying. Um, they also say um, reflective insulation can help improve the comfort of your home while helping to reduce your energy bills. We talked about that with some of those questions, making your home more comfortable, reducing your energy bill, and saving you some money. Uh, the EPA says reflective insulation 
will do that. The U.S. Department of Energy says, unlike most common installations, reflective insulation works by reflecting radiant heat, which is usually placed in the attics. That's where we put it. We put it right over your current insulation in your home. So it goes in right over. It's a very clean install, very easy um, to have our guys come out and install that. Texas A&M says adding reflective insulation to R19 insulation proved to be more effective than upgrading to R30. So huge, uh, huge difference there. Multi-layer reflective insulation. Here's what some of our customers are saying. After installing the MLI in our attic, our bill for the winter dropped over 30% compared to the previous winter. The install was clean, quick, and friendly. We highly recommend this company. That's Dennis and Carla Jackson. Gary Davis says, my home is a lot more comfortable all over. I don't have the hot spots in the summer and the cold spots in the winter. My home is an older home and the sidewalls are not insulated very well, yet the multi-layer insulation made a difference last summer and last winter in the comfort and savings in my utility cost. The hot and cold spots throughout your home, that helped Gary with the MLI. The MLI also, as we mentioned, made his house more comfortable, saving him some money. Uh, Buck and Marge Messinger, it doesn't take much to cool or heat our home since we installed the multi-layer insulation. That means their air conditioner isn't running as much, their furnace isn't running as much, reducing wear and tear on their equipment. So those are some of the things that we talked about. So those are the, some of the things that the multi-layer insulation helped. Uh, back to the kitchen real quick. Seven and a half minutes in, we are up 27 degrees in box A without the multi-layer insulation. Box B, with the multi-layer insulation, we've gained one degree. 94 degrees in box A now, still just 68 um, from 67 degrees in box B. So multi-layer insulation in box B definitely doing its job. Let's take a look at this picture here on this slide. Um, pretty dirty looking attic there, a lot, of, a lot of dirty things in the air. The Environmental Protection Agency says that uh, a dirty attic, it, it's not good for you um, by, by any means. It causes you health issues, it causes you problems over a period of time. And you might say, well, Dallas, I don't go hang out in my attic. Well, of course you don't. But whatever's in your attic is eventually going to get to the living space of your home. Um, the EPA says uh, that air, indoor air pollution is the number one environmental health threat in America today. So whatever's in your attic is eventually going to come down into your home's living space and uh, polluting the air that you and your family are breathing. So uh, a lot could be going on in your attic and it's important to, to, to address that. Um, you know, which attic looks healthier to you? This one or this one over here? I mean, this one, yes, very, this one isn't attractive at all. This one a little bit better. They've got a nice looking, uh, they've got some blown in insulation there. They didn't do a great job installing it, but that's a, that's a whole different subject. But uh, even with just the blown in insulation, that's still gonna have particles and stuff in the air that isn't good for you. So if you were gonna stick your, stick your head in an attic and take a big deep breath, would you wanna do it in one of these attics? Or would you want to do it in this attic? This has got multi-layer insulation installed. A lot cleaner looking. So if I was going to stick my head in an attic and take a deep breath, it's not going to be either one of these. If I had to do it, it would be this one with the multi-layer insulation because that multi-layer insulation is helping trap all that dirty stuff that we don't want in our air down onto the floor of your attic and, and keeping it out of the, the air in your attic, which is going to keep it from eventually getting into your home. So back to those questions that we had at the beginning of our presentation. Multi-layer insulation, knowing what you know now, do you agree that it will cut your heating and cooling bills immediately? Well, of course it will. As soon as it's put in your attic, it goes to work for you. Is it gonna save wear and tear on your heating and cooling equipment? Well, of course, if we're keeping that warm air from getting in in the summertime and we're keeping it from getting out in the wintertime, your air conditioner or your furnace isn't going to have to run as much. So that's less wear and tear on that equipment. Is it going to help eliminate hot and cold spots within, our, within your home? We heard that from a, a past customer. And of course it will. It'll, it'll keep your home more at a steady, consistent temperature. 
Could it uh, create more of a comfortable indoor living area? We, of course, we, we, we heard that through some testimonials that we have. Makes their, makes their home more comfortable. Will it help preserve the environment? Well, if we're using less energy, of course it will. Not running as much anymore. Um, could it potentially increase the value of your home? If you go to sell your home, you can, you know, you, people that are looking to buy a home, they're always wondering what the utility bills are. So if you can say, yeah, I've got multi-layer insulation in my home. My, my utility bills dropped this much, here they are. Well, of course, that's gonna make somebody see your home more valuable. And if we're using less energy, the less dependent on foreign energy we are. If you use less, we don't need as much. So that, that's a, a definitely um, a, a help there. Back to the kitchen real quick. We're 11 minutes and 20 seconds into our demonstration. Box A without the multi-layer insulation. It's up to 111 degrees now. That's a 44 degree increase since we started 11 and a half minutes ago. Box B, we're up to 68 degrees. That is a one degree change in the last 11 minutes and 37 seconds. So uh, uh, pretty, pretty solid there. So a one degree change with the multi-layer insulation, a 47 degree difference now in box A. We'll let that run for a few more minutes. Let's look at a traditional attic here. This is just a, your, your traditional attic, a lot like a lot of our attics here. Um, you got a lot of things going on there. Of course, in the summertime, you got the heat beating down on the roof. Um, that's gonna, you know, you've got the dust and the dirt and the airborne insulation that we were just talking about. Uh, that heat's gonna create a lot of humidity, resulting in moisture and condensation buildup in your attic. And if you have moisture buildup in your attic, um, some bad things could be going on in your attic. You know, you don't like to get in get in the attic and you, you see this black stuff in your attic uh, i mean who know i mean we have a good idea of what that can be and and uh, that's not good for the the structure of your home it's not good for the health uh, of the air that you're breathing so um uh, not a good situation uh when you have moisture build up in your attic what do we have to help you with that we have a solar fan we have a yellow blue solar fan that actually creates a ventilation system or helps improve your ventilation uh, system in your attic it's going to create a constant flow of fresh air coming into your attic and having that air come through your attic and flow back out of your attic taking away all that bad stuff if you have a steady airflow throughout your attic moisture can't build up because it's constantly being dried out and that's a good thing Solar fan from Yellow Blue, you receive a 30% tax credit when you install one of these. The fan has a lifetime warranty. It's got aerodynamic engineering. It's free to operate because it's solar. There's no plastic parts. These fans are very, very well built. Um, they're fireproof. They're built to last, as I've mentioned. And the most important thing, it removes the heat and moisture from your attic. And uh, this, this fan is going to outperform any other type of attic ventilation system that's out there. Uh, no, nothing's going to beat it. It's a very, very effective product. So let's look at our attic again. As we mentioned, we've got the dust and the dirt and all that stuff floating around up there. We've got the humidity causing condensation and moisture buildup in our attic. So let's make this attic better. First, we're going to install the multi-layer insulation, right? That's going to hold down that dust and dirt, keep that from being in the air. It's also going to reflect the heat away from your home's living space in the summer. It's going to help keep it in in the wintertime. The solar fan here, well, when that one's running, well, guess what? It's going to suck out all the moisture and humidity. And it's going to take all the heat and all that stuff out of, out of there, too. So it's going to constantly have that steady stream of fresh air coming in and back out. And it just runs all day long, keeping your, your attic as cool and dry as possible. How did MLI and a solar fan make a difference for Danny and Mary Harless? They say we had a mold and moisture problem in our attic. After installing the MLI and the solar fan, our problems were completely solved, saving our home. Even better than that, our power bill was cut. So we talked about saving you money, talking about uh, uh, getting rid of that moisture out of your attic and making your attic a much healthier attic. Let's go back to the kitchen here real quick. We are 15 minutes, uh, or over 15 minutes now into this thing. We've got a 58 degree increase in box A. Now it's 61. Uh, box B, just a one degree 
change in over 15 minutes um, with the multi-layer insulation. So the multi-layer insulation, as we mentioned, is reflecting the heat away from box B, keeping it nice and cool. Box A that just has our traditional insulation, a 61 degree increase. So a big difference and I think um, I think we're starting to see the value of having multi-layer insulation in the attic of your home. Now, I know that we've probably had this question come up once or twice in your head and you're thinking, all right, well, this stuff sounds amazing. I, I, I would like it, but how much is it? Keep in mind, this is an investment into your home. These are products that are going to pay for themselves over time. These are products that are going to, to make your, your attic a, a safer attic. It's going to um, help control the heat. It's going to help control the, keep the heat out in the summertime. It's going to help keep it in in the wintertime. So these products are going to pay for themselves over time. But to put some numbers on, 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 on paper for you, multi-layer installation, it's uh, $4.19 a square foot. The solar fan, those are $17.95. Since you checked out our video, spent some time um, uh, learning about our products, uh, we'll save you some money on the multi-layer insulation by offering it to you for $3.79 a square foot. And this is installed. This isn't just the product. This is uh, $3.79 a square foot installed for you. Our attic fan will knock $100 off the attic fan and that's installed. So instead of $17.95 for the attic fan, it's $16.95 for the attic fan. And that includes insulation on everything. What is the next step? Well, the next step is to get you scheduled for a free home energy assessment. Absolutely free, no obligation. We come to your house, we spend about 45 minutes to an hour with you. We go through your house and look for ways for you to save energy. We'll also check your attic. We'll look in the attic, check your insulation, and see where we can help you there. Now, here's where it gets really good. Um, if, if we come out and we complete a home energy assessment for you, we're going to give you absolutely free, doesn't matter if you buy from us or not, we're gonna give you free LED light bulbs, up to 20 of them for your home. And these LED light bulbs are going to start saving you as soon as you put them in. They'll save you money automatically. And then we're gonna give you a free $50 Home Depot gift card. That way, if there's any things that you can kind of fix up around your house uh, to help save energy, you'll have that gift card to, um, to, to help you out there. So again, Call this number you see on your screen right now. Schedule your, your home energy assessment. It's absolutely free. There's no obligation. And, um, and, and we'll get you on the path of saving money by cutting your energy use. Appreciate you watching our video today. If you have any questions or to uh, schedule your free home energy assessment, please get a hold of us using the contact information you see on our screen. And we look forward to meeting you very, very soon.